Senate will come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Senators Baisley, Bridges, excused. Buckner, Present. Coleman, Present. Cutter, Present. Danielson, Exum, Fields, excused. Gardner, Janal, Gonzalez, Hansen, Henriksen, Huckers Lewis, Kirkmeyer, Kolker, Liston, Lundeen, Marchman, Senator Marchman. Excused. Michelson Janay. Malika. Pelton B. Pelton R. Priola. Senator Priola. Rich. Roberts. Rodriguez. Simpson, Smallwood, Senator, thank you, Sullivan, Van Winkle, Will, Winter, Winter, excused, Sensinger. Senator Fields. Mr. President. Here. Morning roll call is 32 present, zero absent, three excused. We do have a quorum. Senator Roberts. There you are. Would you please lead us in the pledge? Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the journal, Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that uh, the Senate Journal uh, of April 8, 2024 be approved as corrected by the Secretary. And please, please give a yes vote. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Senate Services. April 9th, 2024, correctly printed, Senate Bills 200, 201, 202, and 203, Senate Joint Memorial 3, 4, and 5, Senate Joint Resolution 16 and 17, and 18, Senate Memorial 3. Correctly engrossed, Senate Bill 189, Senate Joint Resolution 16. Correctly revised, House Bills 1222 and 3041. Correctly enrolled, Senate Bill 73, Senate Joint Resolution 11. Committee reports. April 8, 2024, Committee on Education after consideration on the merits of committee recommends the following. House Bill 1323 referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation. House Bill 1154 be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation. Committee on Transportation and Energy after consideration on the merits of committee recommends the following. House Bill 1250 be referred favorably to the Committee on Appropriations. Members of the Air Quality Control Commission uh, the committee has sat under consideration and has had a hearing on the following appointments. It recommends that the appointments be placed on the consent calendar and confirmed members of the Air Quality Control Commission for terms expiring January 31, 2027. Curtis Reuter of Westminster, Colorado to serve as a representative of technical and industrial experience reappointed. Martha Rudolph of Denver, Colorado to serve as a representative of legal training reappointed. Members of the Transportation Commission for terms expiring July 1, 2027. Shelley Cook of Arvada, Colorado to serve as a commissioner from the 2nd Transportation District appointed. James Kelly of Fort Collins, Colorado to serve as a commissioner from the 5th Transportation District appointed. Rick Ritter of Oak Creek, Colorado to serve as a commissioner from the 6th Transportation District appointed. Barbara Bowman of Grand Junction, Colorado to serve as a commissioner from the 7th Transportation District appointed. And Hannah Parsons of Colorado Springs, Colorado to serve as a commissioner from the 9th Transportation District appointed.
Majority Leader Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate proceed out of order for the consideration of memorials. The motion is to proceed out of order for the consideration of memorials. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. The Senate will now proceed out of order. Consideration of memorials. Will the clerk please read the title of Senate Memorial 2. Senate Memorial 2 by Senator Will, concerning memorializing former Senator E. Martin Marty Hatcher. Senator Will. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of Senate Memorial 002 and request that it be read at length. Will the clerk please read Senate Memorial 2 at length. Senate Memorial 2 by Senator Will. Concerning memorializing former Senator E. Martin Marty Hatcher. Whereas former Senator, former Colorado Senator, educator, and Doctor of Philosophy, E. Martin Marty Hatcher was born in Ada, Oklahoma on September 19, 1927, and whereas Senator Hatcher served his country as a young man in the United States Army 62nd Air Services Group in Fairbanks, Alaska at the end of World War II as a cryptographic technician. And whereas at the end of World War II, Senator Hatcher received an honorable discharge from the United States Army in August of 1946, and later began attending the University of Denver, where he earned his bachelor's degree and met his future wife, Maxine. And where Senator Hatcher married Maxine Milliken in 1948, and together they had three sons, Martin, Winston, Mark, and Noel. And whereas together, Senator Hatcher and Maxine moved to Gunnison, Colorado, after graduating from the University of Denver in 1949, and whereas at the age of 23, Senator Hatcher began teaching speech and drama at Western State College, known today as Western Colorado University, where he would teach for a total of 44 years. And whereas Senator Hatcher was known for his sharp mind and love of learning, and he eventually earned both a master's degree and a doctor of philosophy degree from the University of Denver. And whereas his passion for speech and drama led Senator Hatcher, along with Maxine, to found the Crested Butte Mountain Theater in Crested Butte, Colorado in 1972. And whereas in 1974, Senator Hatcher ran for the Colorado State Senate and was elected to represent what was at the time Senate District 33. And whereas Senator Hatcher served for two terms in the Senate from 1975 to 1982 and was chosen to be the minority caucus chair from 1981 to 1982. And whereas during his time in the state legislature, Senator Hatcher served on multiple committees, which included the Agriculture Committee for all eight years of his time at the Capitol. And whereas after completing his two terms as state senator, Senator Hatcher returned to Western State College to resume teaching, where he began teaching government in addition to speech and drama. And whereas after retiring, Senator Hatcher continued to fill his life with the things he loved most, theatrical productions, public speaking engagements, golf, travel, politics, community involvement, and conversations with family and friends. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Senate of the 74th General Assembly of the State of Colorado, that we the members of the Colorado State Senate honor Senator E. Marty Hatcher for his years of service to our state and to his communities in Gunnison and Crested Butte. Be it further resolved, that copies of this memorial be sent to Martin Winston Hatcher and Marty Crawford, Senator Hatcher's son and daughter-in-law, Mark and Pamela Hatcher, Senator Hatcher's son and daughter-in-law, Noel and Sheila Hatcher, Senator Hatcher's son and daughter-in-law, Cameron Hatcher, Senator Hatcher's grandson, Taylor Gregory, Senator Hatcher's granddaughter, Becky Schaefer, Senator Hatcher's niece and her husband, Steve Schaefer, Gordon Gregg, Senator Hatcher's nephew and his wife, Pat Gregg. Heather Spillman, Senator Hatcher's great niece and her husband, Jason Spillman. And Christy Allen, Senator Hatcher's great niece and her husband, Corey Allen. Senator Will. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. You know, I, uh, uh, Senator E. Marty Martin Hatcher, um, you know, I, n I never met yeah, please be seated. Thank you. I never met Senator Hatcher, but 
he lived a life of servitude and, and uh, as well as being a well-respected uh, professor of speech and drama at Western State, as you heard, now Colorado Western University, but he went to work uh, for the school as a young man after attending the University of Denver where he met his wife, Maxine. They ended up settling in Gunnison, and uh, as, you, as you heard, Senator Hatcher was elected to the Senate seat in 1975 and, and served two terms. He was, uh, he was smart enough not to go to the House, so that was good. Uh, <laughs> He was, Marty was well known for giving entertaining and eloquent speeches. Uh, I, I think maybe Marty and I are cut from the same cloth there. So, uh, but uh, you all see a handout on your, uh, on your desk. And I want you to take a look at that because uh, that's a photo of Marty having a, a cigar lit by the minority leader before they deba debated an anti-smoking bill. So that's the kind of character he was. Uh, and I think we all know how history handled that topic, but um, you know, but at times we, we honor those who came before us, but just being ourselves and not realizing it, you know. I, I, uh, I think I never, like I say, I never met him, but I, uh, I, I, I know I would have liked the man and talking to his family over there, I'm positive I would have liked this man. And uh, not that I like martinis, but I do like beer. So uh, we're, I think we're in uh, pretty good shape there, but uh, you know, I think he'd also, as many of you know, I have that spittoon sitting on my desk. I think Marty would have liked that. But um, he served during a very impactful time in Colorado's history and sharing the chamber with other notable members such as uh, Dan Noble, Martha Ezzard, and, you know, Senator Bridges just did a memorial here a few weeks ago for uh, Martha, and then uh, Dennis Gallagher, Senator Gonzalez did that memorial, uh, Ruth Stockton, Senator... Uh, Callahan and other great Coloradans, but the uh, class of senators he served with reflects the quality of his character and of his mind, I think. Um, he was well-educated, shared that passion for theater and the history of the theater, thousands of students, and he had such an impact. Uh, you know, uh, Western Colorado University was uh, naming the Performing Arts Hall uh, Martin Hatcher Theater. So what a, what a legacy, and what a legacy for the family. And uh, Marty's love is still carried by many of those folks to this day, and his influence will continue for generations to come. So, and uh, I, I wanna thank his son and daughter-in-law, uh, Mark and Pamela Hatcher for being here, and his son, Martin Hatcher as well. So thank you, it's a, it's a great honor to have you in this chamber with us today, and to honor and give tribute to such a great man. So. I know everyone, I speak for everyone in here, we thank you for that. Um, I know Marty brought a, a lot of uh, life to the Capitol and today he reminds us there's a lot of life outside these walls. I think, uh, I think we need to all keep that in, uh, in the back of our minds. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on outside the walls of this Capitol building. and We need to enjoy life like, like Martin did. Um, he left the Senate and went back to teaching, um, so I want to just recognize his contributions to this community, this state, and uh, live out our lives with the same passion as Marty Hatcher did. At this time, Mr. President, we have one of his colleagues to speak. If you can. Will the clerk please add Senators Bridges and Marchman to the roll? Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to suspend, sus, to suspend Senate Rule 31A for the purpose of allowing current or former members of the House to address the Senate from the well to consider this memorial. This does take a two-thirds vote. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. The Senate will stand in recess to hear remarks from members of the House and former members of the Senate. Members. Please welcome back to the chamber, Representative Hudson. Representative, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, good morning. Um, I'm sorry to be here twice in a month uh, for this particular chore, but I I uh, wanted to talk about Marty. I even uh, wore my biggest, loudest uh, bolo in honor uh, of his service because 
uh, before Ben Nighthorse Campbell got here, there were members of the legislature that wore bolos to satisfy the tie rule. Um, I was uh, a candidate at the age of 32 in 1978, and uh, you know, you say things as you're campaigning at the door, not, you don't know what you're gonna be doing when you get down here. And I um, knocked on a door over in West Colfax in West Denver, and the woman came to the door, told me that she has being, was being treated with chemotherapy for her breast cancer, and she was really irritated that they were selling marijuana on the street corner and she couldn't get any and needed it to combat the uh, nausea that came with her chemotherapy. And I said, I promise you if I'm elected, I'll introduce a bill to create a medical program in Colorado. Uh, I got elected and uh, the first phone call I got was from her and she said, are you gonna introduce my marijuana medical bill? And I said, well, of course I am, I, I promised you that. And then I got a call um, from uh, leadership that said, Miller, your bill has been scheduled for the first day of the session on January 7th. And I said, you know, holy crap, <laughs> I don't have a bill, I don't know what to do. And um, I talked to Dennis Gallagher and I said, I need a Senate sponsor. He said, why don't you work with Marty Hatcher? And uh, that was how I met Marty. And uh, we uh, had that bill and he said, but I need you to do me a favor. And I, and I said, what's that? And he said, well, I need a house sponsor for my bill for informed medical consent for electroshock therapy. Well, I didn't know anything about it, but I said, sure, why not? And <laughs> I'll sponsor that. So we carried those two bills in the 1979 session and uh, I was able to go over uh, to the National Jewish Hospital Center where most of the research on marijuana therapy for uh, chemotherapy, and, and I think you have to remember 40 years ago, th chemotherapy was basically a matter of giving you poison and hoping it would kill a cancer before it killed you. And uh, 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 Solomon came in and testified. Art Hertzberger from Colorado Springs was the chairman, and he had every intention of PI my bill that first day. But after we had presented the testimony, he said to me unexpectedly uh, and to the committee, I want to lay this over for three weeks. And he went and did his research, and I did not know, of course, that his wife, Lucky, was being treated uh, for breast cancer as well. He came back, helped me pass the bill. We sent it over to the Senate. Then the electroshock bill was coming over to me and the people in favor of it came to meet with me and I called Marty, I said, these are all Scientologists. And he said, yeah, Miller, but even a stop clock is right twice a day. And uh, uh, in those days, electroshock therapy was basically, you know, plug you in the wall and there were broken bones and issues of memory loss and that kind of thing. And all we were saying is that you can't administer this without explaining the risks to the patients. Both of them passed. We spent the next three years that we were both here, uh, we would adopt one orphan bill from citizen lobbyists every year uh, that couldn't find somebody to sponsor it. We got four out of five passed. I'm very proud of that. Uh, Marty used to invite myself and folks from both sides of the aisle to come speak over at uh, uh, Western State in Gunnison. And uh, the best part was uh, the lubrication uh, that we uh, undertook at the saloons after the classes. So I missed uh, 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 Marty, but uh, we stayed in touch for a while until he quit teaching. So i uh, was glad to come here and tell you a little bit about him. He was a a robust human being with a great sense of humor uh, and, and great sympathy and empathy for the people of Colorado. We were lucky to have him, as was Western State's budget. Thank you. The Senate will come back to order. Senator Will. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I renew my motion for the adoption of Senate Memorial 002 and request a roll call vote. The motion is the adoption of Senate Memorial 2. Will the clerk please poll the members? Senators Baisley. Aye. Senator Baisley, aye. Bridges. Aye. 
Senator Bridges, aye. Buckner. Aye. Senator Buckner, aye. Coleman. Aye. Senator Coleman, aye. Cutter. Aye. Senator Cutter, aye. Danielson. Aye. Senator Danielson, aye. Exum. Aye. Senator Exum, aye. Fields. Aye. Senator Fields, aye. Gardner. Aye. Senator Gardner, aye. Janal. Aye. Senator Janal, aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Senator Gonzalez, aye. Hansen. Aye. Senator Hansen, aye. Henriksen. Aye. Senator Henriksen, aye. Hawkes Lewis. Excused. Senator Kirkmeyer. Senator Kirkmeyer, aye. Kolker. Aye. Senator Kolker, aye. Liston. Aye. Senator Liston, aye. Lundin. Aye. Senator Lundin, aye. Marchman. Aye. Senator Marchman, aye. Michelson Janae. Aye. Senator Michelson Janae, aye. Malika. Aye. Senator Malika, aye. Pelton B. Aye. Senator Pelton B, aye. Pelton R. Aye. Senator Pelton R. Aye. Priola. Aye. Senator Priola. Aye. Rich. Aye. Senator Rich. Aye. Roberts. Aye. Senator Roberts. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Senator Rodriguez. Aye. Simpson. Aye. Senator Simpson. Aye. Smallwood. Aye. Senator Smallwood. Aye. Sullivan. Senator Sullivan, aye. Van Winkle. Aye. Senator Van Winkle, aye. Will. Aye. Senator Will, aye. Zenzinger. Aye. Senator Zenzinger, aye. Mr. President. Aye. The President, aye. With a vote of 33 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, two excused, Senate Memorial 2 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senator Will. Thank you, Mr. President. I request the current roll call be added as co-sponsors. I see no objection. The current roll call will be added as co-sponsors. The Senate will now observe a moment of silence, and the chimes will be rung in memory of Senator Hatcher. Thank you to the family for joining us this morning. It's an honor to have you here to honor the late Senator's life and service to the state of Colorado. The Senate will stand in a brief recess to greet our guests.
The Senate will come back to order. Senator Will. And thank you, Mr. President. And one thing I forgot to point out during the memorial is that uh, if you look at uh, Marty's picture there and that great bolo tie that he's rocking uh, is a great piece of turquoise and a great bolo tie. And, uh, you know, Representative Hudson wore a bolo tie today in his honor, and his son Martin is actually wearing one of his dad's bolo ties. What a great honor and tribute to do that and have that in this building again. So thank you very much. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate proceed out of order for a moment of personal privilege. Motion is for the Senate to proceed out of order for a moment of personal privilege. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Senate will proceed out of order. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. Requesting a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Thank you, Mr. President. Today we are honoring the past, present, and future black firefighters of the Denver Fire Department. Today we honor the black firefighters who came before us by recognizing their invaluable contributions and for paving the way for diversity and ensuring a brighter future for the department. The future is bright and we hope to continue to grow and model diversity within the Denver Fire Department. Senator Fields. Good morning, Mr. President and colleagues. I'd like to request a moment of personal privilege. Granted. I want to acknowledge the strong men and women that serve in the fire department across our state, in Denver, and beyond. When I think about the face of those who serve in danger, I think about three examples. One that we're all familiar with, and that's 911. When you saw firefighters rush into the collapsing Twin Towers in New York City because of their dignity and service and oath. We owe you a great sense of gratitude for your commitment to save property and lives. That's one. Number two is locally for me. It was the effort that I saw you all demonstrate as it relates to the Aurora Theater shooting. When we saw first responders in the fire department rush into a situation where there was a lot of uncertainty. All we know that there was trauma and there was things going on. And it was the face of the fire department that ran in there to render aid to people that were shot, that were people that were lost in that tragedy and beyond. Thank you. The last example I have is a personal example. The personal example was when my mom was sick and she was ill, and I couldn't get her up. And so I called 911, and the fire department showed up, saved my mom's life by rendering her the aid that she needed to get her to the hospital quickly. We live in a nation and a state that we should be proud that we can call 911 and someone will show up. And they serve us with dignity and respect and with honor. So I'm here to let you know that the state of Colorado and the state Senate appreciates your service that you provide on so many different levels that we don't hear about. But we just appreciate you showing up in your uniforms to serve and protect. Thank you so very much. Senator Exum. Thank you, Mr. President. Ask for a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Thank you, sir. Um, I served uh, Carl Springs Fire Department for 35 years, 10 months, and 19 days, and a couple hours. <laughs> and I am so proud uh, to see these young uh, black men and women 
uh, serving in the fire department. Uh, in 1995 and 96, I had the opportunity to train uh, three recruit classes while I was healing up from an injury. And what I share with that recruit class and I'll share with you today is never ever forget your humble beginnings. And stay safe, God bless you all. Thank you. Senator Buckner. May I have a moment of personal privilege, please? Granted. Um, thank you. It, it is just such an honor to have all of you here today. Uh, seeing all of these amazing black firefighters just makes us proud. We know how difficult your job is, and I've had some great conversations with many of you this morning. And one of the points I want to make is we have to remember when we pass laws how it impacts everyone. And we had great conversations about policy, and we want to make sure that we include you in future policy by including you in those stakeholder conversations because everything we do and everything we put in statute does affect you. But we're proud as we can be. Please come back again because just seeing this many black firefighters in the state senate just makes us all so proud. Thank you. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I think I have to ask again for a moment of personal privilege, please. <laughs> oh, I suppose. All right, thank you. I just wanted to say, if you all wouldn't mind, please stand. And members, please join me in recognizing the black firefighters in Denver. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members, and thank you all for being with us today. Message from the House. April 9, 2024, Mr. President, the House has voted not to concur in the Senate amendments to House Bill 1390 and requested a conference committee be appointed. The Speaker is appointed Representatives Byrd, <coughs> Chairman. Sirota and Taggart as House conferees on the first conference committee on House Bill 1390. The bill is transmitted herewith. The House has voted not to concur in the Senate amendments to House Bill 1410 and requested a conference committee be appointed. The Speaker has appointed Representatives Byrd, Chairman, Sirota and Taggart as House conferees on the first conference committee on House Bill 1410. The bill is transmitted herewith. The House has voted not to concur in the Senate amendments to House Bill 1413 and requested a conference committee be appointed. The Speaker has appointed Representatives Byrd, Chairman, Sirota and Taggart as House conferees on the first conference committee on House Bill 1413. The bill is transmitted herewith. The House has voted not to concur in the Senate amendments to House Bill 1422 and requested a conference committee be appointed. The Speaker has appointed Representatives Byrd, Chairman, Sirota and Taggart as House conferees on the first conference committee on House Bill 1422. The bill is transmitted herewith. The House has voted not to concur in the Senate amendments to House Bill 1430 and requested a conference committee be appointed. The Speaker has appointed Representatives Byrd, Chairman, Sirota and Taggart as House conferees on the first conference committee on House Bill 1430. The House has granted authorization to go beyond the scope of the differences the bill is transmitted herewith. Introduction of bills. Senate Bill 204 by Senators Janal and Rich and Representatives Bradley and McLaughlin concerning technical revisions to the procurement code. Finance. Third reading of bills, consent calendar. Will the clerk please read the title of the bill on the consent calendar? House Bill 1222 by Representatives Puglesi and McLaughlin <laughs> and Senator Rich concerning updating terminology that refers to entities that administer human services programs. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the passage of the bill on third reading of bills, final passage consent calendar, which is House Bill 1222. Is there any discussion? See none. The motion is the passage of House Bill 1222 on third reading of bills, consent calendar. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, one excuse, House Bill 1222 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Priola. Third reading of bills, final passage. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 189. 
Senate Bill 189 by Senators Fields and Hansen and Representative Weissman concerning gender-related changes to crimes that involve bias. Senator Hansen. Thank you, Mr. President. I move Senate Bill 189 on third reading and final passage. Is there any discussion? See none. The motion before the body is the adoption of Senate Bill 189. Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle, Will, Baisley, Rich, Gardner, Minority Leader Lundeen, Smallwood, Liston, Kirkmeyer, Pelton B, Pelton R, Simpson. With a vote of 22 ayes, 12 noes, zero absent, one excuse, Senate Bill 189 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Gonzalez, Mullica, Marchman, Cutter, Bridges, Colker, Exum, Sullivan, Jaquez Lewis, Michelson Janay, Henriksen, Majority Leader Rodriguez, Priola, Buckner. Danielson. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1341. House Bill 1341 by Representatives Marvin and Wilford and Senator Cutter concerning the state idling standard and in connection therewith authorizing a local government to enact a resolution of ordinance concerning idling that is at least as stringent as but not less stringent than the state standard. Senator Cutter. Thank you, Mr. President. I move House Bill 24, 1341 on third reading and final passage. Is there any discussion? See none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1341. Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle, Will, Baisley, Rich, Gardner, Minority Leader Lundeen, Smallwood, Kirkmeyer, Liston, Pelton B, Pelton R, <coughs> Simpson. With a vote of 22 ayes, 12 noes, zero absent, one excuse, House Bill 1341 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Hansen, Hendrickson, Hawkes Lewis, Priola. General order, second reading of bills. Senator Michelson Janay. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of general order, second reading of bills. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. The Senate will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the general orders, second reading of bills, and Senator Michelson Janay will take the chair. Mr. Majority Leader. Oh, sorry. Um, the committee will come to order and the coat rule is relaxed for everyone. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to lay over Senate Bill 106 until tomorrow, April the 10th. Senate Bill 106 will be laid over until tomorrow the 10th. The motion is, oh my goodness. Welcome to the House. The motion is, um, all those in favor of, the motion is to lay over Senate Bill 106 till April the 10th. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. The ayes have it. Senate Bill 106 will be laid over. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to lay over House Bill 1259 until Wednesday, April the 10th. The motion is to lay over House Bill 1259 until Monday, April the 10th. All those in favor, say aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it, 1259 will be laid over. Will the clerk please read the title of Senate Bill 164? Senate Bill 164 by Senators Buckner and Lundin and Representatives McCluskey, McCluskey and Pugliese concerning transparency requirements for institutions of higher education. Senator Lundin. 
Thank you Mr. very much, Minority Madam Leader. Chair. I move Senate Bill 24164 in the Education Committee report on behalf of the Education Committee Chair and myself. To the Education Committee report. The Education Committee report um, accepted a couple of amendments. This has been a well-litigated bill. We've been working uh, on behalf of the students of Colorado who seek transparency in their um, transferability of credits from college to college and as they move from one institution to another. We uh, added several amendments in the Education Committee that sought to pursue that and we will have a couple more amendments on seconds, but I urge your support of the committee report. Is there any discussion on the committee report? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of the committee report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee report is adopted. To the bill, Senator Buckner. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it is such a pleasure and honor to sponsor this bill with Mr. Minority Leader and my friend and education committee member, uh, Senator Lundeen our Student Bill of Rights, so it's time we look at how to update and how that would improve the academic success of current and prospective students. We know how important post-secondary education is becoming in our society. More and more jobs are requiring higher education and higher degrees that is only going to continue in the future. Students need guarantees and transparency surrounding their academic career. This helps them make educated decisions regarding their future. The transferability and applicability of post-secondary credits has emerged as a focal point in modern education. And studies show that transfers are on the rise overall and markedly for historically disadvantaged groups. On average, transfer students are losing a full semester of credits, and ultimately they're losing time and money having to make up those credits. That is thousands of dollars in classes and loans to make up for work already completed. Existing statute already requires institutions of higher education align learning goals for 100 and 200 level classes included in the statewide transfer matrix. What we have found is that those credits are often transferable but not applicable to a student's chosen major and instead count as electives. If you were a student and you saw a course you took that was part of the guaranteed transfer pathways, what would you assume? Well, I would assume that it would apply to my chosen major. So this bill is inputting language to strengthen the guaranteed trust transfer pathways. And as Senator Lundeen said, this has been a long, long stakeholding process, but the end result is why we are here today. This is really a crucial bill to help all of our students. So we're asking for your yes vote on Senate Bill 24-164. Senator, Mr. Minority Leader. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, on the pathway to that yes vote, we have a couple of additional amendments that we would like to offer. These are part of the conversation <clears throat> that has been ongoing. They would uh, detail specificity around the application that this applies to admitted students. Um, uh, there'll be Amendment 7 and Amendment 8. This uh, Amendment 7 also clarifies the applicability of course credits in the major and if a student changes major at the receiving institution. Do you have the amendments? Seven and eight. I need a senatorial, we'll take a senatorial 30 seconds. Five. Thank you. Sorry about that. All good. Checking. There is an amendment at the desk. Will the clerk please read Amendment 7? Amendment L007, amend the Education Committee report dated March 27, 2022. Senator Lundy. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I move Amendment L07, and it is the, the aforementioned amendment that I was chatting about. 
just okay. prior to moving it. Okay, the motion before us is the adoption of Amendment 7. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Uh, amendment 7 is adopted. There is another amendment at the desk. Will the clerk please read Amendment L008? L008, amend the Education Committee report dated March 27, 2024, page one, line Mr. 10 Minority after. Leader. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I move Amendment L08. To the amendment. Thank you. This amendment, as part of this package of these last two amendments, clarifies the rulemaking process, follows the Colorado Procedures Act. We want to do it right. It clarifies that a student must submit the required materials to receive to the receiving institution, clarifies that the bill applies to 1,000 and 2,000 level co courses, as well as the 100 and 200 level courses, and it further clarifies the work tasked in this bill are specific to the GT Pathways matrix. Everybody loves the matrix. Some of us can see the matrix. Others can't see the matrix. But if you look in the statute book, you can find the matrix. I urge your support of Amendment L008. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Amendment L008. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. L008 is adopted. To the bill. Are there any further, is there any further discussion? Representative Buckner. Thank you. Senator Buckner. Oh, oh, oh. oh. well, oh, hey. I think her, I think her, yeah. Well, that'll, no. that'll be a $5 fine to the chair. Yes. <laughs> I was a state rep before I was a senator, so I take no offense. But once again, I just want to tell you what a proud moment this is. Colorado has always been at the forefront of pioneering initiatives to increase student success outcomes. So this is just another significant milestone in Colorado's journey toward enhancing pathways to higher education and fortifying accountability in our education system. We're asking for a yes vote, and I'm asking for Senator Coleman to take a photo of me with Senator Lundy. <laughs> All right, is there any further discussion? Senator Lundeen. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and I would also not take umbrage should you call me representative. My time in the House was special <laughs> in my life as well. Um, it, it is an honor to stand beside uh, a woman of such incredible stature. She looks short, but she brings great authority to the policy conversation, and I am grateful and honored to stand next to her. Um, she is an unyielding champion on behalf of the rights and uh, availability of opportunities for students. And that's the genesis of this bill. This bill has worked diligently. Um, and the senator has carried this bill diligently to make it better and clearer and more obvious to the students of Colorado that what they think they're going to get mm -hmm. is exactly what they will get. And I am grateful to join along and help lift the burden slightly on behalf of an incredibly skilled, talented, um, and dear friend as well, um, the, the speaker, or not the speaker, but the uh, chair of the Education Committee. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Is there any more kind words to be said on this bill? <laughs> Seeing none, the question before us is the adoption of Senate Bill 164 as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Senate Bill 164 as amended is adopted. Uh, Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the committee rise and report. The motion before the committee is to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee will rise and report. The Senate will come to order. Senator Michael Sinjane. 
Thank you, Mr. President. The committee has met and had a number or had a bill under consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? April 9th, 2024, Mr. President, your committee of the whole begs leave to report it as had under consideration the following attached bills, being the second reading thereof, and makes the following recommendations are on. Senate Bill 164 is amended, passed on second reading, <coughs> and ordered engrossed in place on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Senate Bills 106 and House Bill 1259 laid over until April 10th, 2024, and retaining their place on the calendar. Senator Michael Sunjane. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the report. The motion is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole Report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, Committee of the Whole Report is adopted. <laughs> Senate Bill 164 is amended, passed on second reading order, and gross and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Senate Bill 106 and House Bill 1259 laid over until April 10th and retaining their place on the calendar. Consideration of House amendments to Senate bills. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 24. Senate Bill 24 by Senators Bridges and Van Winkle and Representatives Kip and Taggart concerning the standardization of local lodging tax and in connection therewith aligning reporting requirements related to uh, remittance of a local lodging tax to reporting requirements for remittance of other local taxes. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate concur with House Amendments to Senate Bill 24. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, small technical fix. Uh, sometimes we do miss details here in the Senate because we're looking at the big picture, the important pieces, and uh, they just, they drilled down on a little thing and they fixed it in the House. Motion is that the Senate concur with House Amendments to Senate Bill 24. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the motion is adopted. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 24 for the hardworking taxpayers of Colorado. Is there any discussion? The motion is the repassage of Senate Bill 24. Are there any no votes? Not for them. Not for them. <laughs> With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excuse, Senate Bill 24 is repassed. Co-sponsors. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 94? Senate Bill 94 by Senators Gonzalez and Exum and Representatives Lindsay and Froelich concerning safe housing for residential tenants and in connection therewith establishing and clarifying procedures regarding a tenant's claim of breach of the warranty of habitability. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. We move that the Senate concur with the House amendments to Senate Bill 94. Is there any discussion? Or would you care to share what the House did? Senator Exum. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there was uh, three amendments. Uh, the first one was around uh, technical clarification. Uh, the second one was around rebuttable presumption. Uh, and the third one's around lodging. Uh, the third one, I'll, I'll just mention that, that this uh, proposed amendment gives greater flexibility to landlords in finding an affordable alternative accommodation for tenants who have an uninhabitable condition in their unit that threatens life, health, or safety, such as a tenant must be temporarily relocated while repairs are being made. And we ask for your support on concurring with House amendments. The motion is that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 94. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the motion is adopted. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 94. The motion is the repassage of Senate Bill 94. Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle, Will, Baisley, Rich, Gardner, Minority Leader Lundeen, Janal, Smallwood, Kirkmeyer, Liston, Pelton B, Pelton R, Simpson. With a vote of 21 ayes, 13 noes, zero absent, one excuse, Senate Bill 94 is repassed. Co-sponsors. 
Will the clerk please read the title of Senate Bill 115? Senate Bill 115 by Senators Michelson, Janay, and Smallwood and Representatives Young and Sirota concerning requirements to practice as a mental health professional. Senator Smallwood. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 115. Is there an explanation of the House amendments? Senator Michelson, Janay. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, these were uh, requests from DORA. One changes the length of time for a mental health professional candidate credential. Um, one creates the ability for mental health professional candidate credentials to be renewed repeatedly, uh, aligns the bill with current statutory language, and addresses continuity of care. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 115. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the motion is adopted. <laughs> Senator Smallwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 115. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the repassage of Senate Bill 115. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, Senate Bill 115 is repassed. Co-sponsors. Sponsor. <laughs> Introduction of resolutions. Will the clerk please read the title, Senate Joint Resolution 19. Senate Joint Resolution 19 by Senators Zenzinger and Smallwood and Representatives Byrd and Soper concerning Colorado Youth Entrepreneurship Awareness Week. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to lay over Senate Joint Resolution 19 until tomorrow, April the 10th. Motion is to lay over Senate Joint Resolution 19 until tomorrow. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. The ayes have it. And Senate Joint Resolution 19 will be laid over until April 10th. Announcements. Never mind. Sign the bills. April 8, 2024, the President has signed House Bills 1007, 1033, 1044, 1048, 1062, 1074, 1082, 1097, 1098, 1100, 1102, 1104, 1131, 1143, 1241, and 1277. Announcements. Senator Mullica. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, uh, Senate Finance Committee will be meeting at 2 o'clock uh, in uh, room 357. See you there. Senator Exum. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senate Local Government Housing Committee will be meeting at 2 p.m. Uh, Senate bill or Senate room 352, we are going to hear House Bill 1318 and action only on House Bill 1057, action only on Senate Bill 174, and House Bill 1266. Thank you. Further announcements? Mr. Majority Leader.
The Senate will stand in a senatorial five.
Just go into a conference on the budget. Go into a conference on the budget. Unless they want to object. In response to a it's request from the House for Conference Committee on House Bill 1390, the Senate conferees are Senators Bridges, Chair, Zenzinger and Kirkmeyer, on the first Conference Committee on House Bill 1390. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. President. I request that the Conference Committee on House Bill 1390 be given permission to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses. The motion before the body is to grant permission to the conferees on the first Conference Committee on House Bill 1390 to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no? No! Hey, the ayes have it. Permission is granted. In response to a request from the House for a conference committee on House Bill 1410, the Senate conferees are Senators Bridges as the chair, and then Zenzinger and Kirkmeyer as members on the first conference committee on House Bill 1410. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. President. I request the conference committee on House Bill 1410 be given permission to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses. The motion for the before the body the chamber. is to grant permission to the conferees on the first conference committee on House Bill 1410 to go beyond the scope of the difference between the two houses. All those in favor say aye. 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 That, was, that was two votes. All those opposed? No. I think the two votes have it. The permission is granted. In response to a request from the House for a conference committee on House Bill 1413, the Senate conferees are Senators Bridges as the chair, Zenzinger and Kirkmeyer on the first conference committee. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. President. I once again request the Conference Committee on House Bill 1413 be given permission to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses for the benefit of this chamber. The motion before the body is to grant permission Allegedly. to the conferees on the first Conference Committee on House Bill 1413 to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no? no. The ayes definitely have at that time, and permission is granted. In response to a request, from the House for a conference committee on House Bill 1422, the Senate conferees are Senator Zenzinger as the chair, Bridges and Kirkmeyer, and the first conference committee on House Bill 1422. Senator Zenzinger. Thank you, Mr. President. I request that the conference committee on House Bill 1422 be given permission to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses. The motion before the body is to grant permission to the conferees on the first conference committee on House Bill 1422 to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no? no? The ayes have it. Permission is granted. In response to a request from the House for a conference committee on House Bill 1430, the Senate conferees are Senator Zenzinger, the chair, Bridges, and Kirkmeyer on the first conference committee on House Bill 1430. 30. Senator Zenzinger. Thank you, Mr. President. I request that the Conference Committee on House Bill 1430 be given permission to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses. The motion before the body is to grant permission to the conferees on the First Conference Committee on House Bill 1430 to go beyond the scope of the differences between the two houses. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no? No. The ayes have and permission is granted. Further announcements? Thank you, Mr. Colleagues. Boulder County over there. Let's, uh, let's close this desk before it's, we don't have that option. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate adjourn until 9 a.m. Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? The ayes have it. The Senate will adjourn until tomorrow, Wednesday, April 10th, 2024, at 9 a.m.
Good morning. This